Good evening there, Twitchers and YouTubers, and welcome to episode number five of the Blue Goose interview series. And please forgive me for my voice after the uh, commentary of that Gear Generous Talladega race. My voice is kind of shot, but I'll do the best I can. Uh, tonight's episode is kind of a special one. I got four people in here that make up a a special a certain race team that I've seen from the early days of Norgard TV all the way up to Gear Jams, and they've run an NIS, and they have a good time together, all four of these guys. And that is James Wilms, a.k.a. Cheetos, Richard Schwind, a.k.a. Superman, Joe Petrick, the Birdman, and the returning Chris Scala, known as the Cats and Guys, all four of you guys, welcome to the show. Thank you, Brett. Thanks, Thanks Brett. So, basically, I'm going to go around... And, of course, Chris Gell, you, you were on here before, so some of these questions um, you've already answered. But i got to ask the other guys, you know, Joe, Schwint, and Wilms. Eat those three guys, what led to you guys discovering iRacing and sim racing in general? I think we'll start with Superman, Schwint. Okay, Brett. Um, yeah, I was back in 2012. I, I was wanting to – I'd never done any online gaming, but I wanted to do some uh, – sim racing so i just started searching found uh youtube of i racing and uh so yeah i went and got me a what i thought was a good computer ended up being a junker but it was enough to get me going mm -hmm. and uh yeah that's how i discovered i racing um uh, i kind of struggled a bit because like i said i'd never done online gaming but uh yeah that's how i started uh let's go with uh wilms next well, I was sitting at home, bored one day. I used to do a little uh, gaming on the PC with uh, the very first Call of Duty, and I I'm not a big, you know, racing fan per se, uh, but I liked racing games, and so I was doing a search for racing games, and a uh, Twitcher came up, a Twitch TV, and it came up by racing, and uh, Michael Kahn, aka Norgar, uh, was streaming at the time uh, his races. And I got to watching his stream and was learning about iRacing, and uh, that was back in 2012 also. And uh, I ended up getting iRacing through him because he was starting a league and said uh, we'll, he'll do a rookie league because there was a, about five or six of us that were watching him regular. And uh, so he talked us into getting iRacing. We got a little discount. We got uh, Back then you got uh, – six months free i think it was before he even started to pay it was a six month promo so uh took that started racing in uh 2012 my daughter was 12 years old hence the number 12 and <laughs> here i am today and final goal of you uh joe yeah i always had a big interest in uh, arcade games and video games growing up as a kid and uh, got into consoles um Eventually, got into uh, computer gaming uh, around uh, 99, 2000. Uh, got into a little bit of Madden and uh, some other uh, computer games and started upgrading graphics cards and whatnot. Uh, from there, um, I did notice the Papyrus series and the Sierra series, and uh, I wasn't really good with using a keyboard or any controller with it, and I didn't have a wheel. Um, but I was always interested in NASCAR and uh, racing games. So I just started my search, and I came across i i racing uh, from searching for video games and racing simulators, and uh, eventually got a wheel, started it out, liked it, and I moved on from there. Started buying equipment and uh, progressing. Um, about a year into it, about 14 months later, um, I was trying to look for a social aspect to uh, the racing sim. Uh, PMing drivers after a race just wasn't good enough, and I was interested in joining a league, and um, I started uh, finding out about Nordgar uh, from YouTube and uh, various Google searches, and then I finally had caught him on a uh, Twitch uh, live broadcast, and uh, from there I was hooked. Um, for an entire month, I think I watched Nordgar on and off, not knowing I could actually race in a mystery race. And I thought it was some elite class of racers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, um, but.
about a, about a month into watching him, I actually realized what the mystery racing was and what hosted sessions were. And I was only used to officials. So um, there it was. Uh, I jumped into Nordgar, full feet in. No, very, very good, guys. That's kind of different backgrounds, I guess, how everyone got into iRacing now. Of course, then all four of you guys went into Norgard TV, and then at some point, um, I guess this led to the creation of the Super Captain Cheetos Racing, and I guess maybe I'll start with you, Gallon, and if anyone else can jump in on this one as well. Was there something, this sort of conversation that led to the creation of this team? Or was some, what was it that led to the creation of Super Captain Cheetos Racing? Well, uh, basically, we have uh, a little chat thing that we do on Facebook. Is like a lot of us, the league members, run together and chat in there. But, you know, we've always had our own little chat. And, and just one day, I remember, we just always talk about things. And I don't remember who, who exactly came up with it or whatever. But it was just like, guys, let's put a team together. And, and I thought about it. And it was like, well, can we come up with a name? And then I, I don't remember if it was me or whoever. I don't, I don't remember. Exactly. I'm going to take credit for it. Okay, there you go. So Rich came up with it. But we were like, well, Rich is Superman. Rome's is Cheetos. I'm Captain. Let's put it together. Super Captain Cheetos. And somehow, uh, I don't remember who made the logo, if it was Dixon or whoever, but made a logo of this Captain it Morgan was, Cheetos. It was Fish. It. Fish. It was Fish. David Fish. Okay, yeah. Yep, David oh, okay, Fish. yeah. Um, made the logo for us, and it was like, holy cow, this thing is sweet. It was Fish, as I think back to it now, because I was running the old Captain car he created for us. But... Um, and, and thanks to them for doing that for us. But uh, that was kind of how it all got going. Most of the stuff that like we come up with is just through Facebook chat, literally. Just sit there and talk to each other randomly because we're bored and we act like we're working. <laughs> so I think most of us act like we're working nowadays, but I digress. Um, so as the team kind of began, you guys ran mostly in Norgard TV. I think if I remember correctly, you were guys were in like a Norgard TV truck league is when I kind of first saw that Super Captain Shields name. And this team has basically kind of stuck around for a good long time from the days of Norgard, Norgard TV, you guys running NIS now, basically a lot of times, and of course, Gear Jammers. How has this team progressed and what have all, all four of you guys seen for the progression of iRacing from when you guys first started this team to now? Let's start with uh, Joe. You know, I was pretty fortunate uh, when uh, I joined Nordgar. Uh, this team's concept had just started, and uh, it was it was basically picking teams and whatnot. And there's a whole list of drivers that uh, were signed up for the Truck Series League that they managed. The team owners had management of uh, fantasy style uh, uh, points and whatnot. So I was fortunate to get picked to this team. Um, I've been a proud member of this team ever since. Um, the progression of this team, um, you know, we've, we've uh, brought on new members and, and have grown. Uh, Andy Moore and uh, Dave Rowe, I consider them strong members as well. Um, but... Uh, I think all in all, um, you know, it's it's gone from uh, a, a different league, and uh, multiple leagues have been created from Nordgar. You have a sim racing authority, and then also um, USRC uh, was created, and then you have Gear Jammers. So um, out of those three leagues, uh, there's quite a few members a across there, and we still have uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, membership continuing to grow, and I hope it, it does well in the future. Anything else you guys want to add to that? Yeah, uh, I'll add it to it. Um, you, know, you talk about the progression of the, the Super Captain Cheetos team. Uh, you, know, you look at this year, for instance, I know uh, the last – two or three seasons that we've all ran NIS together and, and we've all, you know, run in leagues and things like that. And uh, I remember for the most part, you know, the four of us would run mid pack and things. And, and this year, you know, we had the pleasure of, uh, I want to say three of the four of us won at least one of the long distance races in the uh, NIS, let alone a race in the NIS. So uh, it seems like each year we get better. Um, we'll, we'll let you guys guess who didn't. 
But um, either way, you know, we keep getting better, it seems like, and just enjoy racing. We just have fun. I, I did win two full distance races in NIS this year. <laughs> All right, so everybody won two except one person. Five. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do remember Wilms' win. That was at, uh, that was Bristol, wasn't it? Yes, sir. And I got a Dago win. Yeah, I remember. I remember the Bristol one. That was definitely a definitely one you definitely earned. So, so we've seen how the team has progressed, you know, from the days till NIS. Um, before, is there any plans for the future of the team itself? Before I kind of start talking about things individually, any plans for the future of the team itself? Uh, do we share the secret about NASCAR guys? Yeah, sure. fill us in, please. Oh, we're going NASCAR racing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and four. Uh, just to keep doing what we're doing, uh, getting some good, decent drivers in the league, uh, both leagues, uh, USRC and Gear Jammers. Um, USRC is, was the main starting point, actually. And then uh, uh, Chris Scala had some major life changes come up, and he couldn't continue to go with USRC. And, you know, the group, not just me, this was a group effort. We, we didn't want the guys to be left hanging, you know. Uh, Chris couldn't run you with this RC anymore. And I says, okay, guys, well, I'll just I'll start up a league so we can all stay racing. And um, I could only race on because I had life change also. So I could only race on the weekends. And uh, so we started up a league. We need, I, I just started a league. I did, We didn't even have a name for it. We raced what? I think one season, two seasons before we actually came up with a, a league mm. name. So, yeah. But, uh, just to keep going, uh, getting some good drivers. We're starting up a full truck league next year. Um, hoping to get, I mean, we fielded 25 drivers uh, uh, tonight, which is the most we've ever had. And I'm hoping to have 30 plus uh, start of uh, next season. So, definitely some play plans in the future. So, now we'll kind of move on from the Super Captain Cheetos, and I guess I'll ask, um, this is a question that I've asked almost everyone that comes in, and I'm going to ask about, of course, the real-life NASCAR chase, and you guys already know my hatred of it to a T, and we kind of see why from the results this year, and actually, a little bit of a kind of stat thing, there's a website called Racing Reference, I believe it's called, and they actually have the chase points and non-chase points. You can see how totally different, I guess we'll call it that was. But um, now, Scala, I've already asked you this before about the chase, but what is your guys' opinion of the real-life NASCAR chase? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Or middle of the ground? Uh, let's start with Wilms. Well, as you say, I'm not a big, huge NASCAR fan. I'm not like Chris Scala you know, who, who follows it to the T and knows all the stats and everything, you know, I, I hardly ever watch it. I do, when I do watch it, I do enjoy it, let's just say that. But I like the new chase. I, I think it's exciting. So I know a lot of guys are on the fence or a lot of guys hate it like you, but I like it. I like it. I like the knockout is what I like of it. I don't know why, but. Uh, Schwint? Oh, I've been a NASCAR fan for all, probably all my life, but not not like to the extent of Chris, you know, where he could tell you what happened on lap 25 of a 1970 Dagger race, you know. Um, <laughs> but what I found is NASCAR just got boring to me. Um, so the chase has brought a, a sense of excitement, you know, it, it's ironic for me to say that because the championships that I've won is just from being consistent, not fast. And that's exactly the opposite, you know, with the chase <laughs> yeah. car. It, it, it's taken away the consistent, good race car driver's chance at a championship. So, you know, I'm torn torn by that, but it has added so much excitement to the end of the, the season that I've got to say I'm a fan, but I completely understand the hardcore NASCAR guy not liking it, you know? And finally, Joe. Well, being a Cowboys fan, it's certainly, uh, I, t I was able to take advantage of that last year. And um, 
I think it gives an opportunity uh, for uh, different drivers to uh, get a chance at a, at a championship. And uh, I, I definitely like it. Um, it's pretty exciting. Uh, kind of fuels the driver's tempers, too. We've seen that uh, all, all three of the years that they've done it. So Yeah, I've seen it quite a lot. So, yeah, I'm for it. Uh, just to answer your guys' question, uh, Pete Hamilton won that Talladega race. <laughs> I, I was 75, yep. Um, now, I got two more questions to ask, and this one I just thought of now. I got to ask you guys, who came up with each of these nicknames? That being Birdman for Patrick, Cheetos for Wilms, Superman for Schwint, and Captain for uh, Scala. How on earth did you guys come up with those nicknames? Let's go from Scala first. Great question. Um, I think it was just because I started running uh, back when we ran Nordgar. I was always one of those, like, I want to find something different. I, always, I liked all the paint schemes and stuff. I'm like, I need to find something different. And back then, I was a kind of younger guy and stuff. And I was like, you know, I always got enjoyed to race and sit there and drink Captain Morgan and Coke and stuff and just have a good time. And I was like, Captain Morgan, that's it. So I put that on the car. And ever since then, I think Joe was the first one. He's like, what's up, Captain? Like that. And it just kind of ran from there. <laughs> um, and ever since then, even though it's, you know, I've run different sponsors and things like that. Yeah. I'm the captain now. <laughs> uh, let's go Schwent. Yeah. The, the way I come up with Superman is I can't paint, you know, I, I, I wish I could figure that out, but you guys know about how good I am at computers. So I was, uh, I discovered trading paints, uh, went looking on the forums, trying to find a paint that I could run wanted to run a Husker paint, but there's like three fans in all of iRacing that uh, like the Huskers, so that was impossible to find. Finally, I found a Superman, and I've always been a fan of Superman, so I uh, got a hold of the guy, see if I could have the paint, and he said it was fine, and uh, I stuck it on there, and it kind of, you know, that was about the time I joined Nordgar, and so I thought, well, shoot, I'll just roll with this theme. And, uh, yeah, stuck. Mm -hmm. And actually, going back to that whole computer thing, I still remember a stream that Wilms did there. If you were trying to build that computer and Joe was helping you set up, that was quite an entertaining experience. Yeah, I am a computer technician as long as I've got Joe on Skype. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Wilms. I was, uh, when we first started up Nordgar, uh, God, it was, I don't know what season we were into. Uh, we started racing the, uh, the old, uh, cup car and, uh, I was looking for a, uh, cheetah or a paint and I seen a Cheetos paint and, uh, nabbed it and, uh, David Fish, again, awesome painter, um, painted me up a couple different cars as we uh, grew and, and gone on and with all my vehicles pretty much. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, they've changed from now on, but yeah, it was just Cheetos from the paint is all. That's how I got the nickname. And I might have an idea how you got your nickname, Joe, but I'm going to ask anyway, uh, Birdman. Well, I got Birdman uh, from uh, 2015 Indianapolis um, when the uh, upgrade uh, on the DX11 came out for iRacing last year. Uh, we were at Indianapolis, and all of a sudden, I started seeing I started seeing birds at different tracks here and there, and I didn't <laughs> mention it until the NIS during the middle of the race at Indy, uh, coming out of turn four. There were the birds flying up in the sky, and I asked if anybody else had seen them in Team Speak. Uh, the next morning, Will Stream comes on on Sunday and um title was Birds in Turn Four. I have a feeling that's what it was because every time you drive around you always see birds all the time. The wills I have should we clarify that these birds are actual flying birds, not birds you would see in racing maybe? Yeah, I've got the good point. But I will say I would have one up on you, Pete Joe, because uh I started twenty four hours of the mall and I saw jet planes. But um, anyways, um, my final question for you guys is, um, and I and again, I think 
<clears throat> excuse me, excuse me, because of my voice. Um, this one I also asked Scout before, and his was what I'm gonna ask about is I think his was he wanted green white checkers, because you know that I stuff gets added to iRacing all the time, and of course everyone and their dog being crazy about dirt, which um I wouldn't say got delayed, but they're still they're still working on it. Um, they won't be out to like between this month and March, somewhere around there, but. But Schwint, Wilms, and Joe, if there was one thing you could add to iRacing that is not coming out already or hasn't been done yet, what would it be? Let's start with Wilms. Um, make the base car solid. Hmm, that's an interesting one, actually. <laughs> good one. Good one. Uh, Schwint? Do I have to just do one? Uh, he does have a list. Yeah. Well, first, the biggest one, I would allow us to limit tires. You know, we've done that. I don't know if we've mentioned that in this uh, interview, but, you know, our, our truck league now is limiting tires, but we have to do it on the honor system. I think it would be cool if iRacing in their in their races limited us on tires, but at least let us limit tires in league. Okay, especially with the, um, I think it's Xfinity and Truck are the only ones I think do limited tires, if I remember correctly, in real life. And Cut's still kind of unlimited. So, and finally, Joe. Well, everybody wants to see green white checkers, don't they? Wouldn't it be cool if you could stick your hand out the window, though, and wave somebody by? (laughs) 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 Or or, or a friendly gesture of some kind? Or maybe I'm a, sensing another sound of a bird here. <laughs> bird man. Yes. Yeah. And on. Uh, uh, Brad, I was going to say, though, I'll add one other thing. I know I mentioned the green white checkers when we did the, the one-on-one, but yeah. there's one other thing I think would be kind of cool. And I know they've worked on it, I think. Um, I think it'd be really cool to see the, the transition of daylight to nighttime racing. I know it's something they've kind of worked on, but I think that's something that would be really cool. Especially what? Especially with changing track conditions, especially it goes from like day to night time. Right. So technically now Scala has gotten two things, right? Right. <laughs> I'm going to brag, but I am like the first driver ever to be on here twice. Well, another thing that I think would be cool, let us try um, live at pit road. I, I want to see if we can handle it, you know, and let us try it in, in uh, league sessions, you know, or host it. I don't think there's any way it would ever Good work. One. I don't think it would ever work in official races because obvious. Yeah, obvious indeed. Well, anyway, on behalf of myself at Blue Goose Racing and Streaming, thank all four of you for coming in and doing this interview. It was kind of a it was kind of a last minute deal, but luckily all you guys were available and we're definitely glad all four came on and um is there any shout outs that any of you guys want to give out to before um, we end this interview tonight? Well, the obvious would be you, Brett. These things that you're doing are really cool. Uh, you know, doing the overview of the races, that's that's made a lot of, uh, it made for, for some good viewing, and these interviews are fun too. So thank you. <laughs> I'll uh, give a shout out to you, Brett. Uh, like Rich said, they're they're really cool. Um, all your videos. Um, I also am going to give a shout out to uh, uh, Nordgar and all the members that were in Mo- Nordgar and that I've raced with. Uh, made some really good friends, and uh, I've still got a lot of friends, you know, through Nordgar. And um, it's been an awesome experience with iRacing racing with everybody involved, you know, through good and bad times. So. Uh, that's it. Yeah, I'll add in there. Also, shout out to you, Brett, for allowing us all on here. And uh, you know, to Nord, who, um, you know, you know, it's like James said and Rich said, he was the one that kind of created all this. And I actually got to talk to him last night. And, uh, you know, he's going to be back soon. Uh, he uh, definitely is excited and doesn't want anybody to forget about him. He's uh, definitely a cool guy. And uh, definitely a shout out to Rich also, because if it wasn't for Rich, I wouldn't have known about Nordgar. Um, I was actually just, I'll make it short real quick. He, uh, I was on a trip to Florida once after him and I went into another league and tried to do it. And it was just not good. And Schwint messaged me on, on 
iRacing, hey, man, come check out this league. And I came back into town and ran a mystery race in which I um, got black flagged by a certain individual in here within like five laps. I don't know how I pulled it off, but thanks. For <laughs> hey, no problem. <laughs> You know, I want to thank you, Brett, uh, for doing all the interviews and uh, the highlights that you do. And uh, especially thank all the NordGuard members. Uh, Nord always said, you know, we have the greatest community in iRacing. And I, I firmly always had believed that. And I, from it, I have lifelong friends. So I want to also spe send a special shout out to Pops tonight. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, so anyway, thank you again, everyone. All for it is for coming on and asking. This is definitely the longest interview of the series, about 27 minutes now. So that's a new record. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thanks again for coming on, guys. Thank you, Brett. Yep. See you, Brett. Thanks, Brett.